Udaman is a continent where most humans have spiritual powers. Ten years ago, a fierce battle took place between Tian Wu and Mo Wu. The Dragon King was the master of Mo Wu, who was defeated by Feng Tian King. Many believe that the Dragon King was killed, but in reality he was instead sealed in the body of our main protagonist, Chu Ling Zhao. Chu Ling Zhao is a typical unemployed man who goes around narrating battle stories and his dream to become like his hero Feng Tian King. One night, in his mother's restaurant he narrates the story of the war that took place ten years ago, between Tian Mu and Mo Wu. Yudaman is a continent which is known for its peace and prosperity, however things were quite different when the war broke out. The Mo Wu temple possessed evil powers, it was known for its cruelty, and wanted to take over this continent under the commands of their master, the Dragon King. Although he was invincible, this didn't last for long as he was defeated by Feng Tian King. He gave a celestial punishment of the soul which shocked all gods and ghosts, and directly killed the Dragon King. As the audience cheered on, Zai Feng called out Chu Ling for being delusional to think that he is Feng Tian's successor, and will inherit his will, since he is useless and has no magical powers. Everyone in the restaurant started laughing, embarrassing Chu Ling. Even his mother gave him a beating for his foolish stories. Somewhere else, a girl can be seen escaping three suspicious men, and just then an explosion can be seen in the further part of town. Chu Ling and Zai Feng are walking back to Zai's home, carrying alcohol. Chu Ling expresses his desire to join the Tian Wu Academy by passing their selection test. Apparently the test is being held earlier this year, since people are worried that the Dragon King of Mo Wu might return. The other version of the story says that he did not completely die, but instead was sealed. Chu Ling tells him not to worry as he will defeat the Dragon King if he returns. But Zai Feng slaps some sense into him as he can't do sh without his magical powers. They both break into a fight, and frustrated with Zai Feng's reaction, Chu Ling tries to show his magical powers but fails miserably, seeing that Zai Feng breaks into a fit. But just then they see four shadows pass by them in a swift. Chu thinks that there are evil spies on the loose, so he sprints to catch them leaving behind an angry Zai Feng. Chu Ling ends up in the forest he has played in since he was a child, and climbs up the tree for a better visual. He spots the three men going deeper into the forest, and once he falls down like the failure he is, he follows them. He loses sight of them but follows a trail of fireflies going deep into the forest. This leads him to a beautiful woman resting on a rock who is channeling them. Just then, the three men appear and threaten her that it's over for her but she doesn't seem scared in the least bit. Instead, she climbs down with a smile ready to take them down. However, before the fight could start, Chu Ling butts in, breaking their attention. Apparently, he is seen running away from the trap she set and ends up bumping into her. The useless freak instead stands up, all set to protect her when he himself can't channel any magic. Apart from having no magic, Chu Ling also has low IQ as he blames the three men for being Mo Wu spies. While he is busy showing off his non-existent magical moves, a demon flower emerges behind him. So the woman uses this as a distraction and runs away. However, a shadow can be seen lurking around her who later turns out to be Zuya. He tells her that she is late but she assures him that there is nothing to worry about. Zuya tells Lan Ruobing that she has to take the test and infiltrate the academy. They think the Academy is already making plans to fight off the Dragon King once he is reincarnated. It is her job to find out about his whereabouts, so she disguises as a man while doing so to reduce the risk of exposing herself. He further reminds her that their boss Mr. Dark Moon will be expecting results, and if she fails to deliver, then only suicide with poison awaits her in the end. Meanwhile, Chu Ling can be seen running for his life from the Demon Flower, and the three men are already dead. The demon flower has finally got to him, as he lies on the ground with nowhere to escape. The demon flower stabs him with one final blow, but before Chu Ling can surrender to death, a voice calls him out. It asks Chu Ling if he wants power, and just then he wakes up with his eyes shot blood red and he radiates an immense amount of power, which helps him in slicing the demon flower with his bare hands, but he soon faints. He is attacked by a demon, but his eyes shot open as he wakes up from his nightmare. His mother greets him with a smile but when he smiles back, her frying pan goes flying at him. She scolds him for being lost all night only to be found sleeping in the woods. She then tells him to get ready as he has a blind date later, but hearing this makes him go wild as he rushes after to tell her that he is going to take the exam. They both argue back and forth until she glares at him and ties him upside down in the middle of the restaurant. But after she leaves, a man dressed as a woman enters and starts harassing Chu Ling. It doesn't take long for him to guess that Zai Feng is behind this, as he can be seen dying of laughter at the doorstep. Chu and Zai are both rushing but Chu ends up bumping into Lan Ruobing, 
who is disguised as a man once again. One can only hope that those powers gave him better eyesight. She soon recognizes that it is the same nuisance from last night, and she is furious to see him alive. Therefore, she shoves them away using her powers and seals the door to prevent them from participating. But Zai knows of another and takes Chu away before he wastes any more time. They end up inside and register for the test just in time. All the participants gather as teacher Sha Mu explains the instructions. Zai Feng gives Chu Ling Zio information about the competitive participants of the exams, Yang Tian and Zio Yi who came there from the same sector and the mysterious but powerful boy, Bai Lang. Chu Ling keeps on taking digs at Lun Rao, but is called out by Shu Mu for talking too much. This gets everyone's attention as they recognize him from his mother's restaurant, and they start making fun of him. Shu Mu tells them that for the first test they will have to defeat a rank 3 beast in the forest of Udom. She then opens up a portal and gives a last message that only the first 200 individuals to compete will move on to the next stage. Upon hearing this, all the participants rush to the portal. The participants use their magic to detect the location of the beast but cannot seem to find anything. Chu Ling crawls down to find one tiny Udom and which runs away as soon as it sees a symbol of some star on Chu Ling. Meanwhile, others are passing the test which pisses him off, as the quota is filling up. Udomans keep on running away from him once they see the symbol behind him. Just as he desperately prays to God for a Udoman, it is answered immediately when he sees a crowd running towards him from an Udoman tiger who is attacking them. It manages to send Chu Ling flying, and ends up injuring his leg. He tries to crawl away with a bleeding leg, but gives up as the tiger roars at him. However, this activates Chu Ling's powers which cause the tiger to throw up and send him running away. Chu Ling screams after him, asking it to come back while also wincing in pain just then. Zio Yi appears and helps him heal his leg. She then asks him if he really wants to become like Feng Tian Jin. However, before she could even hear his response, they are interrupted by Xixing. She gets up and follows him, leaving behind a flustered Chu Ling. The announcer informs the participants that only nine seats are remaining and the dumb overconfident Chu Ling hasn't defeated a single Udaman. But it turns out that he is not clueless after all. He gets an idea to follow after the tiger, which he successfully captures and ties up. As he is dragging the tiger towards the portal, Lan Ruo sees this as an opportunity to use one of her spells. Just as Sha Mu orders to close the portal, Chu Ling comes rushing out only to realize that he now holds a tiny Udaman instead of the tiger. However, Sha Mu realizes that it has an enchantment, so she decides to pass Chu Ling's I.O., which upsets the participants as they think it's unfair. Sha Mu is now suspicious of the participants as she now believes that there is a spy hidden among them, so she plans to investigate it later on. Just then, she opens another portal and instructs everyone to follow her as it is time for the next exam. They are all taken to the spooky Shen Yuing Bridge, where Sha Mu tells them that the first 50 participants who cross the bridge and reach to her before dawn will pass the test. Half of the participants rush towards the bridge but Chu Ling doesn't, and when Zai Feng asks him, he tells him that there are people who haven't moved and the teacher is here too which means that this is no easy test, and they have to follow after her. As they begin running on the bridge, the fog blurs their vision making it difficult for them to navigate. Sha Mu also disappears into the fog making everyone panic, and she can be seen ahead of everyone but Bai Lang is quick to catch on to her. However, she sprints off, while Bai Lang and Lan Ruo are shocked to see dead bodies in front of them. It is revealed that there are demonic bugs on this bridge which feed off spiritual energy, and they respond to the sound of footsteps. So Bai Lang instead decides to jump on the rope of the bridge to change his route and avoid those demonic bugs. However, Lan Ruo sees this as an opportunity to use these to stop Chu Ling from proceeding further. On some other part of the bridge Chu Ling panics as he sees participants being killed one by one but Zai Feng quickly defends by killing these bugs. However, the strongest of the participants are Xixing's squad who form a seal of protection. However, a plot twist occurs right in the middle of the climax as Zai Feng falls over Chu Ling, and they lip lock so much for being single all their lives. They both pull back, disgusted at each other. The seal protection does not hold on for long, as the bugs try to penetrate it by eating it. One of their friends ends up getting drained and killed. Zio Yi notices the bugs crawling right past the participant who is sitting in one place, so she figures out that they respond to sound so she begins to crawl and asks everyone to be silent and follow her. Even Chu Ling and Zai Feng follow them. However, a bunch of vines grow out of the bridge attracting the bus back. She tells them to keep their calm as they are busy feeding off the vines, but Zai Feng brings her attention to the enormous bug in front of them who attacks them viciously. 
Chu Ling tells them to follow the same strategy, because even if it's bigger it's the same bug. However, they fail within a second as another participant gets drained and killed. They immediately form a protective barrier, but it won't hold on as it's a few of them, and the monster takes the trouble off their head by breaking it immediately, leaving them defenseless, so they start employing attacking strategies. Zio Yi uses her fire enchant to light up Shikshin's sword, and he uses it to cut off his long vine arms. However, it doesn't even cause him as much as a scratch, and instead ends up making it even more powerful than before. It turns out that the monster can use magic, so it ends up turning all the participants to stone, except Chu Ling and Zio Yi as she has formed a protective barrier. However, it doesn't last for long as the monster breaks through it and grabs them to strangle them with his vine hands. Meanwhile, Bai Lang and Lan Ruo Bing can be seen reaching the end of the bridge just after Sha Mu. Chu Ling Zio finds himself in a strange place and wonders if he is in hell. Just then a glowing figure appears and tells him that he has been sealed in his body, and the only way to save his friends is if he breaks the seal by touching it. At first Chu Ling Zio is skeptical as he believes that he is being tricked. But the man in the sky shows him all he can achieve if he even has a fraction of the powers. He won't be a loser anymore though doubt this. Convinced with his words and power, Chu Ling then proceeds to break the seal unleashing a monstrosity he is not fully capable of understanding. Somewhere else Zuya disciplines Lan Ruo Bing for delaying her tasks by causing Chu Ling trouble, since she is risking her identity and increasing her chances of getting caught. Just then Zuya stops talking as he is shocked by the smell of the aura, and realizes that it is the Dragon King's. Back at the bridge, Chu Ling Zio manages to break free and save Zio Yi. It can be seen that he is possessed by the Dragon King, as his whole body is covered in tattoos and purple flames and he is not himself as he prepares to take on the monster. Shamu rushes to the bridge when she realizes that something is going wrong on the bridge, and the students are in danger. After defeating the monster, the Dragon King absorbs the spiritual pearl from it to regain power as he is disappointed with Chu Ling Zio's body. He realizes that Zio Yi is finally awake and lifts her up by choking her in midair. He is fascinated to see the rare pink Udaman power in her and is determined to use it. She knows that it is someone else who is in control of Chu Ling Zio's body. This entire scene is quite similar to when Sukuna takes over Yuji Itadori's body in Jujutsu Kaisen. All sunshine boys imprisoned at the hands of thousand-year-old demons. Quite an original concept. The Dragon King is in a trance as he absorbs Zio Yi's power. However, someone attacks him from behind and the seal is brought back, trapping him in Chu Ling Zio's body once again. He faints right on top of Zio Yi and it is revealed that an old man and a woman named Wen who were behind the attack. The director orders her to wipe their memories and to keep a close watch on Chu Ling Zio, as he fears that hell will break loose if the Dragon King completely takes over him. However, Chu Ling Zio's body is quite weak for now, which makes it difficult for the Dragon King to maximize its powers. The two of them disappear and all the petrified students have recovered. Chu Ling Zio finally wakes up after a long slumber, but bumps his forehead with Sai Fangs who is hovering over him. He realizes that some of his clothes are missing, and just then Du Xixin walks in ready to fight him, as he thinks that Chu Ling was trying to do nasty things to Zio Yi. And to make matters worse Chu Ling's trouser slips off which makes Du Xixin even more furious and he pulls out his sword to fight him. But Zio Yi stops him and tells him that he is not at fault, since the two of them have their memories wiped and don't remember what happened at the bridge. Hearing Zio Yi defend him, upset Du Xixin. However Sha Mu steps in and tells him to stop his idiotic behavior. A portal is open for the third exam and Sha Mu informs them that the King of Bugs was not a part of the exam and an investigation will be carried to catch the perpetrator. Since the exam was difficult and messed with, all survivors of the exams have passed and will move on to the next stage. Hearing this Chu Ling Zio jumps around with excitement. Sha Mu then forms a protective barrier that is able to resist any foreign attacks around the portal that leads to Tian Wu Academy. They all rush in and are amazed once the academy comes into sight. There is a large tree with houses in it known as the God's Tree. Sha Mu tells them that it is not an excursion and the academy has more significance than just its landscape. She narrates the history of the academy that the Temple of Tian Wan suffered a great loss even after it won the war, in which Feng Tian King defeated Mo Wu and its leader the Dragon King. He then created a defense enchantment with three pieces of magic due to which their environment is so safe till this date. Chu Ling Zio cries a river upon hearing the same story he has narrated himself a thousand times. She takes them to a rusty old well as their temporary accommodation, since they are not students yet. She then introduces them to their new teacher, Du Yin. But when he makes an entrance everybody is appalled at his appearance, as he is the size of one's palm. 
However, Duyin tries to establish authority but the participants can't help and laugh at him. However, he is only miniature in size as he beats the shit out of one of the participants, shutting everyone up. He then leads them to their homes and tells them that he can read minds, and even proves this special kind of magic by revealing everyone's deepest darkest secrets. After that, they all go on to search their homes. When Zai Feng opens the door to his accommodation, he screams in fear as it is covered in vines. Every other house is pretty similar, covered in bugs and dust. Everyone except Chu Ling Zio seems to like it since he is an anomaly. Just then, a purple-haired woman comes in to ask Zai Feng for help with her door, but he ends up breaking it. This makes her furious so he gets Chu Ling Zio for help to rebuild her door, but he suddenly falls sick due to the mushrooms he ate so he rushes back to his dorm, unaware of what awaits him. Lan Ruobing confused room 6 with hers as the sign was upside down, so Chu Ling Zio walks in on her as she is half naked, and she attacks him immediately causing him to faint. Somewhere else, Zuya is secretly meeting with two other people from Mo Wu, who seem to be planning something. The next morning, Chu Ling is still out from last night when he hit his head, so he wakes up drowsily but is soon brought to his senses when he hears the announcement of being disqualified if he doesn't reach the well's entrance. Chu Ling joins the other participants, and then Duyin gives them instructions for the third exam. In this stage, they will all get a certain amount of coins and the party you can who ends up with thousand coins after eight hours will be allowed to enter the academy. However, the only rule is that there are no rules, and the Red Forest has been declared as a safe area. After everyone has collected their bag of coins, but our dumb freak main character, Chu Ling Zio announces that he has 2,000 coins. After hearing this, all the participants rush after him, and Zai Feng ditches him to save his ass. So Chu Ling Zio decides to distribute his coins in order to stop them from chasing him. He then decides to head towards the safe area, where he is suddenly attacked. It is revealed that the alumni are also taking part in this exam, a piece of information that Du Yin deliberately chose not to share. He is pinned down to the ground where he is unable to move, and other participants also find themselves in similar situations. The senior student threatens Chu Ling Zio to hand over his coins but he tells them that he doesn't have any. However, he rushed to the safe area so they refuse to believe him and the man decides to punch him. But his hidden powers protect him and he is able to escape just in time, creating a huge hole in the ground and leaving everyone shocked. The senior blue-haired freak still doesn't give up and decides to go for another round. But Chu Ling sees him attacking in slow motion, which gives him enough time to dodge. The other student joins in, but this time Chu Ling Zio chooses to attack instead of dodging which sends them both flying. So the girl decides to launch an attack of Road of Thorns which he is able to escape from by jumping 2H9 Egg. He is shocked at his own strength, but it doesn't seem to be in his control as he falls right back down on the ground. Just then, his little Udaman comes in to save the day as it pokes its horn in the man's butt. But Lan Ruobing ties them all up with plants using her powers and takes away their coins. However, Chu Ling Zio manages to break free and sprints after him. However, his mind changes and he rushes to Zai Feng to tell him about the powers he just discovered. Suddenly they hear an explosion nearby. It is revealed that the Mo Wu spies have entered the forest carrying the dragon orb to find the dragon king's spirit owner, and they have caught Zio Yi and want to test her. If she fails she dies, on seeing this Chu Ling Zio jumps in to save them. Before being attacked, Zio Yi and her squad fought hard with Mo Wu spies, but they were too powerful and caused the explosion, which paralyzed them all. Chu Ling Zio jumps in to punch the muscular spy, but soon falls back as he ends up hurting himself instead. So Zai Feng comes to his rescue by blinding the spies with smoke, giving them enough time to grab Zio Yi and the orb and run away. The Mo Wu spy stops them with her neuronal control to immobilize them just before they could reach the safe area. The spies then launch a bomb but fortunately Chu Ling Zio's powers activate again and he manages to defend himself. However, the spies don't stop and launch several bombs at once, but Chu Ling Zio demonstrates great skills by knocking them all down. He then attacks the spy but is sent flying away when the female spy uses her power to defend her partner. They still don't back down and launch another massive attack which leads to the dragon orb falling on Chu Ling Zio. The purple dragon is summoned and belittles Chu Ling Zio's body but he is soon disciplined by his real owner. The dragon king spirit present in Chu Ling Zio who orders the purple dragon to protect Chu Ling Zio. When he wakes up, he finds himself in different clothes. He then hears a voice which belongs to the purple dragon, who tells him that he now possesses multiple powers such as speed, strength, and invincibility. The spies realize that they have found their target. As they approach to catch him Duyin steps in and restrains them, and they have no choice but to retire. 
Duyan then turns around to inform that the test has less than 5 minutes left, and it finally hits Chu Ling Zio that he doesn't have any currency. All the participants have gathered outside the identity door, where Duyin tells them to leave if they have insufficient coins. He tells them that these coins have the power to unlock this door and give you a pure color of your identity. He asks who wants to volunteer to go in first, and Bai Lang steps up. He places his coins in the mouth of the lion and enters inside, and when he steps out he is an Udaman master with the color pure black. Zai Feng tells Chu Ling Zio that he was strong enough to take down 20 students of the academy. However, he is too let down as most of his time was spent fighting the spies so he couldn't collect enough coins. Next is Lan Ruobing who steps in with 2000 coins but doesn't get a pure color. Instead she is given light green despite being so strong. Chu Ling Zio is furious at him for sabotaging his exam and stealing his coins. The next person to volunteer is Du Shikshin. A flashback shows him receiving coins from his fellow Shidai who told him that he is the most deserving out of them all and should have the coins instead. So he and Zai Yi both manage to pass the test. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio is still wallowing in his grief but the purple dragon reminds him to check his belt, in which he finds a different kind of currency. But the dragon and Chu Ling Zio get into an argument until Du Yin calls out for volunteers one last time. So he steps up with zero confidence, and places the currency into the lion's mouth and enters through the door. The lion announces that he has zero power currency which makes everyone laugh, but it doesn't last for long when the lion announces that he has given one spiritual currency, silencing all of them. He steps out but he is colorless, this even confuses Du Yin as this is happening for the first time. The participants get angry and throw a fit saying that the exam was rigged and he is made to pass while others suffer. They all start protesting and even step up to beat him, however Zai Feng steps in but he also gets caught in the fight. Chu Ling Zio even uses his power to attack but they still don't give up. Just then, the vice director Mrs. Wen who appears shoving them all away with her powers. Since she is an important figure, Du Yin orders everyone to stand in attention in front of her. But they all rant and demand an explanation. So Wen who tells them that the door of identification is the fairest representation of the Tian Wu Academy, and also assures them that Chu Ling Zio and Zai Feng will get a warning since they are now official members of the Tian Wu Academy. Later that night, Lan Ruo Bing meets up with Zuya who congratulates her on passing the test. He tells her that he has discovered the Dragon King who is sealed inside Chu Ling Zio's body. This revelation gives her quite the shock, while Zuya tells her that she needs to protect him until the artifact to break the seal is retrieved from the Tian Wu Academy. Chu Ling Zio is feeling down since last night so Zai Feng tries to cheer him up as they walk towards the academy. When they enter the academy, they are surprised to see it lit up and everyone celebrating. Chu Ling Zio is so excited that he starts running and bumps into Sha Mu, who disappoints them by revealing that she wasn't expecting they would make it. They find out that instead of Sha Mu, their head teacher is the short-tempered Du Yin, who is screaming at them for being late. Du Yin gives them instructions on their three lessons, basic, medicine, and full training. After their briefing he takes them all to Shifang Yu to choose their Yudaman weapon. Du Yin leads them to a portal that leads to Shifang Yu, and beyond the portal is a place which looks like a galaxy. There are floating islands all around them in which they will choose their weapons. The islands are linked with their colors, so they all step in their respective colors and enter their islands. But when Chu Ling Zio turns around, he only sees a small house on his island. However, he is the second person after Feng Tian King to have entered the colorless island. When he opens the door, he meets some spirits who ask him to play dice games which he wins easily as he grew up in a bar. Meanwhile, Bai Lang and Lan Ruobing are as fast as always and have already reached the base after choosing their weapons. Other members have chosen weapons such as a sword, daggers and even a flute. After 50 rounds the spirits finally let Chu Ling Zio choose a weapon hidden in different flames. So he uses spiritual currency to pay them, which leaves them shocked as it is nearly impossible for a first year to possess spiritual currency. He then goes back and forth between the different sizes of flames trying to get a reaction from the spirits. But he ends up choosing a wooden plank and everyone laughs at him for being the joke he is. Later that night, he wonders if this wooden plank is really special since the spirits were quite shocked when he chose it. Just then several explosions occur all over, so students step out to check what's wrong but they are harassed by their seniors who are trying to steal their Udaman weapon. Among the chaos, the Mo Wu spies are back and threaten Da Xixing to hand over his sword. Meanwhile, Bai Lang and Lan Ruobing seem to be the only ones who fight back and are able to defend their weapons. When the seniors enter Chu Ling Zio's dorm, they are surprised to see that he only has an ordinary wooden plank for a weapon. 
so the senior tells him to keep his weapon safe as it might block damage. The next day Zai Feng tells Chu Ling Zio that those students were from the Pure Color Clan, a powerful student organization. However, Zai Feng was able to keep his dagger by giving up half of his savings. All students have gathered for their basic learning of Udemon weapons, but Du Yin is unaware that most students have had their weapons stolen the night before. So he asks who still has their weapons with them, but it's only a handful of students. So he scolds them all for not being strong and asks them to get practice weapons for the time being. The next day, Chu Ling Zio writes a letter to his mother and lies by assuring her that he is doing well despite living in a tough environment and he still has no idea what to make of his wooden plank. Later that day, Duyin stops the students mid-training and introduces them to their Cernios who they will be fighting against. Some of the students believe he is one of the seniors who was involved in last night's incident. Duyin selects Shikshin as the first volunteer to fight his senior. Da Shikshin attacks first by using his sword part mountain technique, but his opponent Huan Si is able to dodge it swiftly and counter-attacks him by using a thousand hands technique which sends Da Shikshin flying and passing out as he falls back to the ground. After his first win against the newbies, he asks Du Yin to let him fight Bai Lang and Lan Ruo Bing together. Huan Si's friend is excited as a F flashback shows them being severely wounded last night after they were beaten up by the two strongest newbies. But they both fight so well that they even end up scratching his face. The entire crowd was stunned as they witnessed a fight of pros. Next up, Huan Si calls Chu Ling Zio and Sai Feng to fight him, and needless to say the color of their faces drained immediately. Chu Ling Zio gets thrown like a baby and wonders why he can't use his powers, so the purple dragon tells him that he still can't control the power of the King of Bugs. However, it is revealed that he got a second weapon from the island which he can use. The four of them seem to be wearing out as they take on Huan Si, but Bai Lang draws a strategy as he has figured out that Huan Si is getting immense power from his cloak, so they all decide to attack from three different sides. However, when Lan Ruo Bing tells Chu Ling Zio to hide instead, he gets angry. As they all move to attack him, Huan Si fights them all simultaneously, so Chu Ling Zio sees this as an opportunity to attack him from behind. But Huan Si still manages to fight back. However, Chu Ling Zio's powers appear and he is able to dodge his attacks, and then uses his second Udemon weapon, a vacuum seal to absorb his cloak and reveals that he has four hands, which is why he was able to throw several punches at once. This angers Huan Si and he moves to beat up Chu Ling Zio but is stopped by Du Yin. After they both bow, Chu Ling Zio returns his cloak. Huan Si is seen begging for forgiveness in front of the Pure Color Clan's master for losing to Chu Ling Zio. The master tells him that he has brought shame to the entire clan and he has no interest in any of his explanations. He then asks Huan Si about the meteor stone, but he can't find it in his cloak. The master reminds him that the stone is of extreme significance to the clan, so Huan Si bows down once asking for forgiveness and promises to find it. Back at the academy, medicinal training has started which Sha Mu will be teaching this semester. She tells them that their first task is to find the eight herbs mentioned on the first page of their book, in teams of two. So Chu Ling Zio teams up with Sai Feng. But unfortunately a giant man claims Sai Feng is his partner and drags him away. But when Chu Ling Zio turns around to find a new partner, everyone has already formed teams which leaves him with no choice but to helplessly follow Lan Ruo Bing. As they walk into the forest, Chu Ling Zio finds it difficult to shut up and blabbers on how he is the king of the forest, because he grew up eating strange herbs here. Lan Ruo Bing finally gets annoyed and tells him to find the first four herbs, while she finds the remaining herbs and then they will meet up later. Lan Ruo Bing has managed to find one of the herbs, but when she tries to grab it, her head starts aching and as a result her foot slips causing her to fall down from a huge height. She ends up hurting her arm, but Chu Ling Zio comes to her rescue, and to stop her bleeding wound he spits chewed herbs on her arm. He also takes off his belt to wire the wound, but she interprets it wrongly so she kicks him, and Bai Lang has been watching them from the top of one of the trees. After two hours, everyone has lined up so Sha Mu can award them grades, but when it's Lan Ruo Bing's turn she is about to fail as she only has one herb. However, Chu Ling Zio comes to her rescue once again with the largest bags of herbs, earning them an A+. Plus. Seeing this gesture Lan Ruo Bing blushes as he rambles about trusting him next time. Later, Sai Feng is feeling down because Chu Ling Zio managed to find more herbs than he did. But he stops when he sees a large crowd has gathered. So he decides to move in closer and sees that Huan Si is bullying Chu Ling Zio. But when he spots Sai Feng he makes a signal to him that only they understand. He then challenges Huan Si to a fight once again, 
but with the condition that he gets Huancy's room if he wins. However, if he loses, he will leave the academy and let Huancy do whatever he wants with him. Just then, Sai Feng brings in Sha Mu and Chu Ling Zio tells her to be the judge of their fight. She agrees and tells them that the only rule is to not kill each other. As soon as the fight begins, Chu Ling Zio starts frantically running away, while Huan Si is throwing a thousand punches at him. Chu Ling Zio is running because he doesn't know when his powers will appear. Just then the purple dragon's eye appears and tells him that since he can't control the Beast King powers, the powers won't appear at will. He then figures out that the powers appear only when he is in real danger, so he stops running and turns to face him instead with his eyes wide open. Just then, his powers appear and he is able to dodge Huan Si's punches and even manages to grab his hands, which shocks everyone, even Chu Ling Zio himself. Chu Ling Zio's hands are glowing with magical powers, and the purple dragon's eye tells him that he can now control his powers. This infuriates Huan Si even more, and he attacks without warning but Chu Ling Zio is able to see through his punches clearly and dodges every one of them. However, he uses acceleration to speed up his punches, and the students also start getting concerned since he is on the verge of killing Chu Ling Zio. There is so much dust that it hides Chu Ling Zio which makes it difficult to tell if he is even alive. Just when Huan Si is done and stops, the dust settles revealing Chu Ling Zio in a protective barrier. This leaves Hu and Si confused who finally puts two and two together that it's the clothes which give Chu Ling Zio sudden powers. So he strips him off but due to the immense power hidden in the clothes, Hu and Si is electrocuted and passes out, which declares Chu Ling Zio as the winner and the owner of Hu and Si's dorm. Chu Ling Zio invites all the students to his dorm but there are only two rooms, big enough for four people. Xi Feng wants to share his room with Chu Ling Zio, but Lan Ruobing steps in and even threatens him to back off. So Chu Ling Zio and Lan Ruobing end up in the same room, but she creates a poisonous vine boundary in the middle of the room to protect her identity and warns him to not cross it. All Bai Lang ends up with Xi Feng who is annoying him with their stupid family history of being royalty. Somewhere else, Hu and Si is tied up and beaten up by his master who blames him for the tarnished reputation of the Pure Color Clan, as they have never lost so terribly before. Guyin informs Wen Hu about the growing problems of the Pure Color Clan. He tells her that Huan Si deliberately picked up a fight with Chu Ling Zio, but Wen Hu tells him that they can't take strict actions against the group since their parents or relatives are part of the senior management at Tian Wu Dian Academy. So she tells him to secretly investigate the Sushi Stone because she thinks only someone with a strong and powerful background can be brave enough to steal it. Later that night, Chu Ling Zio is examining his weapons, the wooden plank and the Zukong Yin, but when he picks it up the sushi stone falls out of it. This scares him as he realizes that this is the exact stone Huan Si wanted, and it ended up with him when he absorbed his cloak. He accidentally smashes his wooden plank which reveals another Suoshi hidden inside the wood. The two stones merge to form a different one. Chu Ling Zio is wondering how this happened when he sees Lan Ruobing sneaking out in the middle of the night, so he decides to follow her but she is fast and disappears from his sight. However Bai Lang is also following her, and she notices him but while being chased she falls from a tree because she has exhausted her spiritual energy, so she sends her spiritual butterfly instead. Lan Ruobing is struggling with her powers, so she decides to take off the cloak as it's heavy and requires too much of her spiritual energy. She steps on a rock to gather energy. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio sees something glowing in the forest from afar, so he decides to get a closer look and is surprised to see the same girl from before. He tries to move closer but steps on a twig which gets her attention and breaks her rhythm. As a result she passes out so Chu Ling Zio is left with no choice but to carry her to his dorm. He puts her to rest on his bed and examines her closely, and he notices a shiny gem on her forehead. But when he touches the gem he sees a vision of the two of them surrounded by fire. Just then, she wakes up and they're in an awkward position, so she introduces him to the nutcracker and restrains him with vines. She also warns him not to tell anyone about what he saw by making him eat a spell. In response Chu Ling Zio says he understands her as he is also an orphan adopted by a woman who never told him how his parents died. Xi Feng hears them talking so he asks Chu Ling Zio what he is up to, while he is distracted and replies to Xi Feng. Lan Ruobing sees this as an opportunity to escape but leaves behind her necklace. The next day, Bai Lang is in the head's office, and it is revealed that he is working with them secretly to catch Mo Wu spies. He asks if they should do something about it, but the head tells Bai Lang to wait as they want something more out of it. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio is pacing back and forth when Zio Yi calls for him. 
They both greet each other and start blushing. But Chu Ling Zio gets to the point and asks her if she could tell him something about Lan Ruo Bing's necklace. However, Zio Yi thinks the necklace is for so he immediately clarifies that it belongs to another girl and gives her description. But Zio Yi is just disappointed to hear this. She asks about the girl's name but Chu Ling Zio is only able to say her family name before he starts coughing up blood due to the spell Lan Ruo Bing fed him. Zio Yi uses her powers to heal him and tells him that she is running late for class. However Lan Ruo Bing has been listening to their conversation and is worried that her identity is at risk. Zio Yi meets up with Shixing in the forest and asks him about the Hua family. He tells her that they were a very powerful family but they disappeared before the Tian Mu battle, and there is no trace of them since then. Chu Ling Zio is seen running late for class 2, and Shixin gives him a map of their training location but the sneaky smile on his face indicates that he set him up and gave him the wrong map. So Chu Ling Zio has lost his way. Just then he is attacked by the members of the Pure Color Clan who ask him for the Suoshi Stone. Chu Ling Zio tries to use his power but struggles to do so and runs away. However, the senior students catch up to him and start attacking him, but he manages to unleash his protective barrier which sends them both flying. However, Chu Ling Zio is on the verge of passing out and a masked man walks up to him and tells him that his body has two different holy powers so his body is unable to sustain them, and at this rate he is bound to give in and fall weak. Back at the training location, Sai Feng lashes out on Qixin for giving Chu Ling Zio the wrong map. But Qixing doesn't seem sorry. Zio Yi steps in and advises to inform the instructor and look for him, and Sai Feng agrees. But when he turns around, he sees that Bai Lang and Lan Ruo Bing have already left. Bai Lang follows her, while she sends her spiritual butterflies to spread out and look for him. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio is wincing in pain and struggling to get up. The masked man tells him that the two external spiritual powers make his body worse every day, and if he uses them again, he will die. Chu Ling Zio asks the man about his identity, but he just bends down and strangles Chu Ling Zio. The masked man asks him if he has the two Suoshi stones, and Chu Ling Zio tells him the truth. So the masked man tells him that the stones hold the key to Bai Ling Long, which has the power to break his seal and recover his spiritual powers. He reveals that Bai Ling Long is one of the three holy weapons that was used by Feng Tian King to cast a protective barrier around Tian Wu. Just then, other members of the group can be heard running towards them so the man leaves but he gives Chu Ling Zio a pill to help him fight the pure color clan members. And he manages to defeat them all swifty. As he is panting, he notices Lan Ruo Bing's butterfly which informs her of his location. Somewhere in the forest, Bai Lang manages to take down the masked man. But it turns out that it was only a puppet, so he suspects that some unknown people are trying to approach Chu Ling Zio, and he must inform the director. While Zai Feng is helping Chu Ling Zio walk, he asks why the Pure Color Clan has targeted him. Just then, a flashback shows the masked man telling him that the Bai Ling Long does not exist in this world and only he can find it, so there is no point of the Pure Color Clan finding the key if they can't find the Bai Ling Long itself. But Chu Ling Zio lies to Zai Feng that he was probably being targeted because he beat Huan Si and took over his dorm. But he asks Zai Feng how he found out about his location, so he tells him that it was the cloak guy, Lan Ruo Bing, who found him. Just then, a huge rock is about to fall over them, but Lan Ruo Bing saves them just in time. They see a man approaching from the smoke, and it turns out it is the master of the Pure Color Clan. He introduces himself as Bei Chan and threatens that he will deal with Chu Ling Zio himself. Sai Feng realizes his true identity and warns them both, so Lan Ruo Bing immediately runs to attack him but he is too quick and starts throwing huge rocks at her. She barely manages to escape. Even Sai Feng backs her up by throwing his daggers at him but they backfire causing him to pass out. Bei Chen then brings his focus back to Chu Ling Zio by cornering him to the edge of the cliff. Bei Chen expresses anger over his tarnished reputation because of him, and threatens him to hand over the Suoshi. Only then he will let Chu Ling Zio die with his body intact. However, Chu Ling Zio's powers activate so he proceeds to attack him, but it barely has an effect as he is sent flying to the edge of the cliff. He then throws a huge rock at him, finally pushing him off the cliff, but the barrier barely manages to protect Chu Ling Zio. Bei Chan then strangles him mid-air. Lan Ruo Bing sees this scene unfold and uses her wines to attack him but he dodges it. However, this doesn't stop her and she corners him from everywhere by holding him in mid-air with her vines and sends him flying. She then saves Chu Ling Zio, but Bei Chan is safe so they all start running away. However, all three of them are paralyzed and Chu Ling Zio realizes that the spies from Mo Wu are back. He is knocked down and she scans him for the Suoshi but finds nothing. 
However, she does find the key of Bai Ling Long which Bei Chan is really pleased to see. It is revealed that the leader of the Pure Color Clan and the Mo Wu spies were secretly working together, as Bei Chan wants to take over Tian Wu because he has been ignored by the director for so many years. Chu Ling Zio is shocked to realize that the Mo Wu spies are also part of the Pure Color group. The three of them are still paralyzed as Bei Chan prepares to kill them because they know too many secrets of the Pure Color group. So he launched his attack but the rock stopped mid-air and Bei Chan was paralyzed. Turns out that the other two spies want to protect Chu Ling Zio as they know the Dragon King is inside him. She uses complete control of nerves to stop Bei Chan, giving the three of them enough time to escape. The next day, Chu Ling Zio reported this incident, so all of the Pure Color Clan group is ridiculed and as their punishment they will be imprisoned. And later that day, Du Yin gives the key back to the master. However, the key ends back with Chu Ling Zio as the masked man retrieves it and gives it back to him. Meanwhile, Lan Ruo Bing meets up with Zhu Ya in the forest, who asks how the master's body is doing, referring to Chu Ling Zio, so she assures that he is under her protection. But before she can leave, he warns her that without her protection, his body has grown weak and they were almost killed. She is shocked and wonders how he knows about the incident, but he reminds her that Chu Ling Zio's life is important as compared to their own. The next day, all the freshmen gathered to practice for their qualification exam for Junior Huan Hunchi. Duyin gives them instructions that it will be based on their performance and they need to follow the guidelines mentioned in the student handbook. Then they all start training with their weapons, as Duyin examines them. Shixing and Zai Yi are paradising with their magic, Zai Feng is training with his daggers and Bai Lang breaks a rock in half as a flex. However, Chu Ling Zio is struggling to make full use of his power and is losing his breath. But he still doesn't give up and gives it his all, but his body cannot withstand that power so he passes out. Zai Feng rushes to him and asks if he is okay, but he shrugs it off and wants to try again. However, Du Yin refuses and tells him to rest instead. Chu Ling Zio gets up and sits by a tree where he examines his hand and is upset about his lack of stamina. Du Yin then gathers them all and tells them to not be proud of themselves since their performance is just average but they are fit enough to take the exam. After everyone has been dismissed, Chu Ling Zio doesn't budge since he is too heartbroken about his powers. Both Du Yin and the Purple Dragon Zai believe that he should give a makeup exam next year instead since his body is too weak and he needs time to adjust. Even Lan Ruo Bing is now concerned for his well-being. Later that night in his dorm, Chu Ling Zio remembers all the moments where he struggled with his powers, when he fought with members of the Pure Color Clan and the Masked Man told him to not struggle so much, and during the training session as well. He refuses to give up or be weak since he wants to be a hero like Feng Tian King. He reflects on his entire journey in the Tian Wu Academy and is really upset because if he can't even clear the junior qualification exam, then he will not be as strong as Feng Tian King. The key to Bai Lai Long glows in his hand but he decides that he will return it soon after his powers return by breaking the seal. He then gets up and walks out of his dorm in the middle of the night. After walking for a while, he reaches his destination where the masked man invited him, and he soon arrives. Chu Ling Zio tells him that he wants his spiritual power back. As they are walking, Chu Ling Zio asks him about Bai Lai Long's location, so the masked man turns around and asks him for the key. The key starts glowing in his hand and suddenly a huge amount of magical power is coming out of the key, which then locates the Bai Lai Long. So the masked man reveals that the Bai Lai Long is not restricted by time or space and exists anywhere in this world. But the spirits who protect the Bai Lai Long start charging towards the masked man so he prepares to fight them off. He starts taking them out one after the other and captures them. He then instructs Chu Ling Zio to head towards the hall, as he continues to trap the spirits that block his way. After walking down a long hallway, Chu Ling Zio spots the Bai Lai Long. He steps forward to grab it, but it radiates so much light that it is almost blinding. Just then, one of the three enchantments protecting Tian Wu has been deactivated. Chu Ling Zio is now shooting rays out of his eyes and is having trouble controlling it. But it soon subsides as Chu Ling Zio completely absorbs the power of Bai Lai Long. So he gives it a test and demonstrates strong spiritual power. But he is worried about how he will get back Bai Lai Long so he rushes out to find the masked man. But when he steps out, the man is nowhere to be found and the building also disappears from behind him. Chu Ling Zio realizes that the sun is rising and he will be late for the exam. So he decides to look for the masked man after his exam. All students are heading to the exam hall for the Junior Hu and Hunchi qualification exam. The judges have arrived. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio is running at an inhumane speed to reach the exam hall. 
when who gives her opening speech to the students, after which she commences the exam which is in pairs, a duel between students. The first group is Zai Feng versus Zia Long. As the match begins Zia Long attacks Zai Feng who barely manages to escape. Zai Feng then throws his daggers which arrive just in time, piercing Zia Long's back and declaring Zai Feng as the winner. After several matches, Chu Ling Zio finally arrives in time for his match against Nan Wu Bei. His opponent has huge swords which he uses to attack Chu Ling Zio immediately. However, he absorbed the Bai Lai Long, so such an attack has no effect on him as he blocks it with his elbow, and with one attack he defeats Nan Wu Bei, shocking everyone. Somewhere in the forest, Zuya is preparing his army to infiltrate Tian Wu. Chu Ling Zio got so exhausted after the fight that he fainted. But just then there is an explosion and Mo Wu's army has entered the exam hall. They waste no time and start attacking the students, so all the teachers head down to protect the students from being killed. But Duyan stays back and tries to read minds to find out about who is behind this attack. Meanwhile, a student is being strangled but Sha Mu steps in and knocks the man down to protect the student. The army is going around killing students one after the other, but Duyin knocks down some of the Mo Wu army members. Meanwhile, Shixing is running away with Zai Yi but she keeps on asking him where they are heading. However, they encounter a Mo Wu member but he runs away after Shixing shows him a symbol of the pure color clan. Among the chaos, Zai Feng rushes to Chu Ling Zio is out cold to wake him up, but Zuya butts in and warns Zai Feng to step aside and attacks him. Zuya is hovering over Chu Ling Zio, but he is soon attacked by the master. But Zuya knows his true identity and calls him out as Feng Tian King, shocking all the teachers. Just then the Tian Wu army surrounds Zuya and Feng Tian King instructs Bai Lang and the army to handle the rest of Mo Wu. Feng Tian King reveals that he has been watching all along and has been aware of every action and plan of theirs. But Zuya wastes no time and starts attacking Feng Tian King. Despite his old age, he is able to defend and dodge all his attacks and even attacks back, which sends Zuya flying. So he decides to turn into a beast which grows him stronger and he charges once again. And this time, he even manages to scratch Feng Tian King's face, so he has no choice and Feng Tian King reverts to his young self. But Zuya doesn't hold back either and changes his form once again to grow stronger. Meanwhile, Lan Ruo Bing heads over to save Chu Ling Zio who is still passed out, and the smoke is too strong for her to see anything. Feng Tian King brings in Hun Yu Tian Fa who ends up brutally attacking Zuya's arm. Feng Tian King warns Zuya and asks if he wants to be the next Ku Long Wang. The Hun Yu Tian Fa is controlled by Feng Tian King who orders it to kill Zuya but he takes Lan Ruo Bing as hostage so Feng Tian King immediately stops. Zuya reveals that she is the last member of the Hua family, so if he kills her the entire lineage will end with her. However, Lan Ruo Bing is quick to attack and uses her vines to tie up Zuya. So Feng Tian King uses this opportunity to control Hun Yu Tian Fa and direct it towards Zuya to finish him off. But this takes up a lot of power from Feng Tian King and he loses his stamina as reverts back to his old self and falls to the ground. Feng Tian King walks over to Lan Ruo Bing and tells her that he will tell her whatever she wants to know, and then heads over to Chu Ling Zio who is still passed out like a sleeping beauty. But as he is walking, he is suddenly attacked and it is none other than Wen Hu. Lan Ruo Bing helps Feng Tian King who is coughing up blood, but still musters the energy to ask Wen Hu why she attacked him of all people. Just then, Wen Hu summons the Mo Wu army and reveals that she can't let him stop her stepfather. Hearing this gives him a greater shock, as his health also deteriorates with every passing second. Just then, Sha Mu and Du Yin rush to the master's rescue. Wen Hu then continues to reveal her story that she recognized Feng Tian King at first glance as he sealed her stepfather inside of Chu Ling Zio. She was always abandoned and ignored by him, but she was so driven by revenge that all these years she was stuck by him hiding in plain sight. She realized her chance had finally come when she saw his reaction seeing Chu Ling Zio on the bridge. She then devised a plan, where she learned to control the puppet that led Chu Ling Zio to Bai Ling Long. She then tells him that Ku Lu Wang will be revived soon. Meanwhile, Zai Feng tries to wake Chu Ling Zio up, although he can hear his voice but he is lost somewhere. He then realizes he is back where the seal is and realizes that a different man is now sitting across the seal. He introduces himself as Ku Lu Wang, so the purple dragon Zai welcomes back. It takes a second for Chu Ling Zio to put two and two together as he realizes that the seal has been broken. Despite no escape, he still tries to run away but Ku Lu Wang catches him and eats him up. When Chu Ling Zio wakes up and opens his eyes, they are gone. He is now under the Dragon King's control and his true self is nowhere to be found. 
Chu Ling Zio's body now possesses all of the Dragon King's power which Ku Lu Wang uses to attack Sai Feng and other soldiers. He then sprints off to Wen Hu and passes out which shocks Feng Tian King, as he realizes that the seal has been broken. The two mischievous students from the Pure Color group appear and paralyze Feng Tian King and his people. Just then, Bai Chen reveals himself and mocks Feng Tian King for never valuing him enough. He then uses his powers to transport him and the rest of the Mo Wu members. Du Yin reveals that he read Bai Chen's mind and they were transported to the altar of the last battle. So Feng Tian King tells them that they have to rescue Chu Ling Zio within four hours otherwise it will be too late. Somewhere else, the real Chu Ling Zio can be seen captured in a different kind of prison where is struggling as he is in constant pain. When Hu and her army have arrived at the ruins of the last battle, she instructs Bao Gui to head down the stairs and she follows behind after ordering everyone to wait there and to not allow anyone to go inside. Meanwhile, Tian Wu's army is seen rushing towards the location. In a change of scene, Chu Ling Zio's body is resting in the middle of the temple. However, Chu Ling Zio's soul can be seen struggling but it is only causing him pain, so Ku Lu Wang tells him to become a part of him. But Chu Ling Zio immediately refuses and tells him that his spirit is also colorless just like Feng Tian King's spirit, who once defeated Ku Lu Wang. However, after hearing his emotional speech, he just laughs it off. Somewhere else, Shi Qing is still running with Zai Yi until she has had enough and lets go of his hand. She asks him in an accusing tone if he knew everything, and he admits that he did because he couldn't take it anymore. He is the Da Da Zai of Jian Zongji, but he couldn't get into the school if she died and help, and he even lost against Chu Ling Zio which further bruised his ego. He tells Zai Yi that he knows she loves Chu Ling Zio but he can't help it because he loves her too. After hearing his confession, Zai Yi is taken aback but Shikshin continues to speak and reveals to her that Chu Ling Zio is the real target of Mo Wu, since Ku Lu Wang is inside him. But she still decides to leave and help Chu Ling Zio as she can't let the Dragon King be revived and destroy everything once again. But before leaving she asks him if he can let this happen then where has his dignity as Da Da Zai of Jian Zong Ji gone. Meanwhile, the Mo Wu army is waiting for the arrival of Thuri King. But their plans are put at halt as Tian Wu's strongest army has arrived. But Wen Hu wastes no time as she orders her army to kill them off, with the help of the ugly looking creatures who just spawned out of nowhere. Sha Mu and the others prepare themselves and begin to fight back, while Bai Chen targets Feng Tian King by throwing a huge attack at him. However, he is able to dodge it but before he can even recover, Wen Hu and the monsters start attacking him, so they can corner him to kill him off easily. But Feng Tian King unleashes his powers which turn the monsters into burnt toast. But he ends up losing most of his stamina as a result. Meanwhile, Chu Ling Zio's body is disintegrating as he is finding it difficult to resist and is giving up to Ku Lu Wang. He even bids farewell to all his loved ones, but he doesn't realize that they still haven't given up on him. Just then, Lan Ruo Bing finds a way to sneak as her butterfly lands on Chu Ling Zio's chest indicating his location. She steps in and tries to wake him up but realizes that his consciousness will soon be taken over Ku Lu Wang. Suddenly Lan Ruo Bing remembers using her forehead's gem, and she transfers her consciousness inside Chu Ling Zio's mind. Once she enters his mind, she reveals to Chu Ling Zio that she's the cloak guy he met, and she believes they can win as a team. Ku Lu Wang recognizes her as she belongs to the Hua family, but this doesn't bother him as he continues to hold Chu Ling Zio hostage. He then attacks Lan Ruo Bing who struggles against his power, and seeing her in this situation Chu Ling Zio's transparent spirit awakens which allows him to break free from Ku Lu Wang's hold. After which, the Dragon King's aura completely disappears and Sai Yi also arrives in time to save Feng Tian King and heal him. All three of them are still in Chu Ling Zio's conscience, as Lan Ruo Bing and Chu Ling Zio fight the Dragon King. However Chu Ling Zio's power shows have no effect when facing Ku Lu Wang. So Lan Ruo Bing uses her vines to restrain him but he simply powers up and frees himself. Ku Lu Wang promises to spare them while he releases even more of his power, which forces Chu Ling Zio to use his colorless spiritual power to shield Lan Ruo Bing. But their shield gets destroyed and Ku Lu Wang reveals that since they're in his domain they must abide by the domain's rules. He reveals that the first rule is that his power is limitless, so he attacks Chu Ling Zio. However, he tries to dodge but his power is absorbed which reveals. The second rule that the more spiritual power they use, the stronger he becomes, allowing him to be revived even faster. Lan Ruo Bin uses her vines to pull Chu Ling Zio back and body shields him from an attack. As she starts to slowly disappear, Ku Lu Wang reveals the third rule which is that if someone is defeated in his domain, their spiritual power is also absorbed. 
As she fades away, she tells Chu Ling Zio that she wanted to pay him back for all the times he helped her. Watching her fade from his conscience, Chu Ling Zio goes super chad and punches the hell out of Ku Lu Wang, who tries to restrain him with the vine powers he absorbed from Lan Ruobing. Chu Lang Zio simply machine guns him with energy balls, however, every time he uses his powers, the faster Ku Lu Wang revives. Budget Naruto stops using his Biju mode and tries to beat Ku Lu Wang with his fists, however, he loses his hand, then he loses his other arm. Ku Lu Wang gets up and chokes the hell out of Chu Ling Zio until they talk about the Hua family, which Chu Ling Zio reveals they're all dead. Suddenly, a bright light appears and Ku Lu Wang coughs blood. In the real world, Lan Ruobing uses her vines to destroy the Dragon King's domain. When Chu Ling Zio wakes up, Lan Ruobing places a stronger seal and promises to kill him if he reveals her identity. She also tells him he's still trash because he must repeat his exam. Meanwhile, while sitting on his throne, the Dark Moon Lord tells his subordinates he has to take care of everything by himself. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to see more please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss a future video. And until next time guys, take care.